Now we're going to start off with Forex. Um, what I've been doing is whatever markets I actually like, I kind of drag to the top of my list. And the number one I like today is the Euro Yen. Now what I would be waiting on is a divergence uh, potentially coming in on the five minute. This is going to be a two hour binary to begin with. Now that might roll over uh, into, you know, a longer term trade. Uh, I'm not sure yet, but do you see how the 15 minute is overextended on the stochastics, on the RSI and on the ADX? So that tells me that this has the potential to likely go down to this congestion dot, which is at 124.87. Okay. I do think you're going to have to have the divergence on the five minute. You know, um, when you see the stochastics overextended on one time frame, you go down a time frame. That tells you it will come in on the five minute. Okay. And that may roll over into the 60 minute chart. Okay. But um, this one, I'm waiting for that to happen. Uh, over on the Euro dollar, you pretty much have the same example. Okay. You're overextended on the stochastics, overextended on the RSI, overextended on the ADX. Okay. So that tells me we need a divergence on the five minute, but we do not have that bearish bar. Okay, and that's what I would be looking for. Again, this has the potential to roll over into the one hour chart. And remember on the Euro dollar, uh, I think the spread, the strike width is four pips, okay? On the British pound, you know, not my favorite because it doesn't open uh, until later this morning, okay? And you can also see it's not overextended on these three oscillators, okay? Um, you could potentially have a divergence on the 60 minute that is feeding into the four hour chart because you're overextended, okay? I just think it might come up here and test this area before that comes in, okay? So not my favorite one by any stretch. The USD CAD, again, you won't have this open until later this morning, but you do see you're overextended, overextended, overextended. You know, it could be that this doesn't come in until after eight o'clock. I think it will come in before, which is what's going to prevent me from taking it. Um, now, if you see this between, for example, the four hour and the one hour, this is overextended, you get a divergence over here, you could play that one, or since this is overextended, wait for a divergence on the 15 minute. That one would probably happen after eight o'clock this morning. Do y'all understand those? Now, on the USD JPY, okay, you don't have exactly the, the same setup, okay? Um, you are getting to the point of being overextended here. You just had a divergence here, um, potentially down to 96. I mean, that's only a 10 pip move there, okay? Um, it would have to come really come down to 105.84 um, for you to really make money on this move. You need that, that width there. So if you just mouse over the congestion dot, do you see how that is coinciding with the ATR over on the four hour chart? It's right here. Do y'all see that? So that has a potential to go there, a potential, okay? Um, again, this is my least favorite setup. This is like, okay, I really want to trade today. Well, this is the only thing I could find, 
Okay. But again, this would not be my preferred setup. All right. Now, before we go and look at the futures, I wanted to go over the market reports. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, we don't have anything. Then on Wednesday, we do have the CPI month over month, the core CPI month over month. Then we have the employment change in the unemployment rate on the Aussie. On Thursday, the RBA governor is speaking on the Aussie. And then on Friday, we have core retail sales as well as retail sales. Now, they're expecting a drop. Um, the previous month was 7.1. They're expecting it to come down to 1.3. Then on Friday, they're expecting 7. Point, it was 7.5. They're expecting it to come in to 1.9. Okay. Now, I don't know whether uh, y'all know it or not. But this, if you click on it, it will actually show you uh, the graph of what it has been, okay? And you can see we had that dramatic downturn April and May, okay? And then the stimulus came in and unemployment, it went up and now it went back down. This is where they anticipate it this time, okay? Sometimes that helps to understand the market reports and the reactions, okay? All right, so let's go and let's look at the futures. Um, I think all of the futures are extremely overbought, okay? You see it, it's overbought, it's overbought, it's overbought, it's overbought, overbought. You know, this is oversold, so this is going to cycle back up and then potentially back down. Now, you could potentially look for uh, divergence over here on the 15-minute chart. Um, do I think it's going to come down today? Yeah, I think it has a potential to come down, especially if you look at all three oscillators. All of them are overextended. All three oscillators overextended. All three oscillators overextended. So this has the potential to go down significantly, okay? What does that mean? Since this is also overextended, uh, I would expect it to go down to 27,704. That's about 300 points. No, 200 points, sorry. So does it have that potential? Yes, okay? What's going to kick it off is probably going to be this divergence that just came in. Um, they could come back and test this. Y'all know that. But a more likely place for them to test will be 27,978. Why? That is the fast moving average on the five minute chart. And I don't know whether y'all know it or not, but do y'all see these? Um, uh, red and blue tabs here that allows you to actually trade directly from the chart if you're trading the underlying okay so for example if we wanted to sell the e-mini dow we could just click that Oop, click too much and then go in here and just say sell now again you would always want to put your take profit and your stop loss it's just an easy way for you to get in the market. Now, and I don't know whether y'all know this or not, but um, when I'm on my iPad, if I do the app, I can't trade. But if I open this up in Safari, I can trade. Just in case y'all didn't know that. I was talking to someone the other day and they didn't know you could do that. And so you can actually um, get rid of that box now and just drag your orders around anywhere on the screen. So any questions on the Dow? I do think it's going to go down today. Okay. Um, let's go and look at the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ has not been in tune with the Dow or the ES for the last couple of days. Okay. 
So this is one you want to pay attention to. It's not my favorite to trade right now just because it's not in alignment, okay? Uh, you are overextended on the four hour chart, okay? That makes me think we're going to get a downward move and you just had the divergence on the one hour chart. Now, I would have preferred that that divergence be right at this congestion dot, okay? There's about a 40 point difference between where price is currently at and where that congestion dot is. Do y'all see that? So this is one I said, well, I don't really want to take that from the one hour. Do you see how the five minute is overextended? So this is where I would prefer that this come down to the congestion dot, okay? Flipping the ATR and then go back and test that ATR. Do y'all understand that one? So if I had a choice, which one would I choose? Probably the Dow. Any questions on that one? And usually I'm trading uh, either the Dow or the NASDAQ. Sometimes I'll trade the Russell. The one that I do not like to trade is the ES. And that's simply because it doesn't move as much as the other two. Um, but do you, you typically do see the same patterns. Now on this one, you're overextended on all three oscillators the stochastics, the RSI, and the ADX, but that's only on the 15 minute, okay? If you come and look at the one hour chart, you're overextended on the oscillator, uh, the stochastics, and on the ADX, you're missing it over here on the RSI, okay? Now, you could get a divergence here, okay? And you see you had a bearish bar. I mean, it's red, it's bearish, right? No, because that closed in the middle of the bar. It is not a strong bearish bar, okay? I would be looking for a more significant bearish bar that actually would scream at me or at least tell me they truly had intent to take the market down. That's not true intent, okay? So this is one, if I'm looking at this, yes, you do have potential divergence there, okay? But I would either go to the 15 minute or to the five minute and time the entry on those two. The one I think you have to be careful over is the NASDAQ. I don't think you have a clear path on that NASDAQ trade. Um, that's the one I would actually watch out for. Now, something else I just want to highlight for y'all. Um, sometimes things pop into my head, okay, and this is one that's popping into my head. Do y'all see this right here? It says 0.25. Okay, that's the difference between the bid and the ask, okay? So when you hear all these people say, well, there's a big difference between the big and the ass on the binaries. Uh, professional traders are already used to that, okay? Uh, Wyckoff used to call it the invisible tick, okay? That's been around forever. And right now, it's, it's basically one tick, which means one increment, okay? You can see that this is 33.75.5. This is 0.75. Okay, so that's what, you know, again, Wyckoff called it the invisible tick. Now, at 930, this number could go up to two points. Okay, I've seen it. Um, let's go and look at gold. I'm not sure that will be on there. Do you see how gold is 0.2? So there's two ticks on gold. Gold is notorious for having a very wide spread. Okay, so, you know, I have seen it as much as 0.7 on gold, sometimes even up to one, which is 10 ticks, depending on who you're trading with and what your bandwidth is. Okay, you better have a very, very fast 
computer if you're trying to trade gold futures. And again, it's just something that popped into my head. Okay, let's go look at the Aussie dollar. Yes, I am ADD, so my brain pops around. Do you see how on the Aussie dollar it's 0.2? Okay, that's basically because this market is moving slow. It's not a fast moving market. Fast moving market, it will increase a very slow market movement. It will increase as well. Why? Because there's not a lot of bid and offers being offered. Okay. So on the Aussie dollar, you know, this is not telling you a lot other than you had divergence two days ago. You're not overextended here. You are almost at the point of the ATR. What makes me nervous about this is that it's tested the fast moving average and that fast moving average held. Okay. Now that coincided with the ATR over here. Do y'all see that? But to me, you just don't have a lot of room. You've hit resistance already. And then your 15 minute is showing divergence to the downside. So do y'all kind of get each time frame is showing you something different? They're not trading in unison. I wouldn't take that trade. That's why it's not on my favorite list today. Now, if you go back to the reports, do y'all see how you have a lot of reports tomorrow night on the, uh, well, just to employment change and unemployment rate tomorrow night, okay? Maybe this is going to move in a sideways market, okay? Maybe this is the top of the market and this is the bottom of the market, okay? So if I look at that, it's like, okay, that's 71.87, this is 71.42, that's about a 40 pip area, Okay. If I was trading a two hour binary, okay, it's four pips between the strikes. Well, I might would take that. Do y'all understand that? But is it my favorite setup? No. Is it the setup that's going to make me go, wow, that's really cool? No. All right, let's go look at the GBP US dollar. Okay, we're overextended here. This one, we had the divergence two days ago. We may test that fast moving average, not quite to the point of being overextended. Um, are overextended here. If we had a bearish bar, that would cause it to go down. We are overextended here. We could look for divergence here. This is another one. Do I think it will go down? Yes. Is there a setup there? No. You know, and we have other good trades today. So this is not one I would take. And this is why, you know, y'all heard me talk about don't be married to a market. Okay. Today is a good example. Most of y'all know I trade the uh, NASDAQ. Typically, I love the NASDAQ, okay? But today is not a day I would trade the NASDAQ. But if I'm married to the NASDAQ, okay, if that's the only market I look at, today would be a day that I could not trade. The same thing goes for the British pound dollar. You know, I know a lot of traders that will only trade the British pound dollar, okay? That makes it harder to trade because if it's not moving, if you don't have a trade, guess what? You shouldn't be in that market. Guess what? Because it's the only market you trade, you'll still be in it, which makes no sense, okay? I mean, there's too many markets to look at. Now, occasionally I do look at the USD Swiss franc. This one to me is more of uh, one that I would trade longer term. Okay. Um, this is a great example. This was overextended. Okay. Overextended on the ADX. Okay. You had the, um, the divergence came in here. I would actually say this bar. 
okay? So you have the potential to go back up to uh, this ATR, okay? So if we come back and we look here, do you see how it tested the fast moving average over here? Okay, this broke through it. This was the test. Do y'all see that? Now, what is the issue? Is whether you have enough room for profit. That's going to be your issue, especially if you're doing a binary because you need this move to come in. Um, you know, this happened on the 6th. Uh, was that on a Friday or a Thursday? Because that's what will kind of screw you up. Because I know yesterday was the 10th, the 9th, the 8th. The 7th. Yeah, it was on a Thursday. Okay. So this one, if you had time decay working in your favor, you could have taken that trade to the upside. Now, would you take it from the five minute chart? No, 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 no. Why would you not take it from the five minute chart? Because this is like the Aussies. It's even slower than the Aussie. Up until the US session opens, then you'll get some quick movement on it. 